Hey, this is René, and in this video, I will show you how to create a Python server on your local machine and then send requests to the server from your MetaTrader 5 terminal. So let's start with a quick demonstration. I can launch my Python program, my Python script here, which will start the server and then wait for requests. In the MetaTrader, I can use my expert advisor that sends the request to this server. And th then you can see once everything is set up, they will start communicating with each other. So you can see with every single tick, the server realizes a get request from the MetaTrader terminal. And also the um, yeah the the meter trader here uh, receives a message back from the server. So how does this work? And this was a GET request. In the end, also, we will have a look at POST requests. So we can send data from the meter trader, then process them uh, or process the data if we want on the server and then send something back. This video is presented by BM Trading. Learn to code your own expert advisors. Link in the description. So let's start with the Python script, which is actually the more uh, complicated thing to do. So what we do here in the very beginning, we import HTTP.server from, uh, or we import from the HTTP.server uh, module or package, we import the HTTP server and the base HTTP request handler classes. And then we also import the time module here. Then we create a class which is or which will be the handler to handle the HTTP requests later. So I call this class my handler, and the class inherits from base HTTP request handler, which is the one that we imported up here. So what we do here, basically, we just overwrite two of the methods or functions inside of the base, base HTTP request handler uh, class. First of all is the do underscore get. Here it is important that you write a G, E, and T in uppercase letters. So this is the first that we overwrite. And um, yeah, this is uh, uh, applied on the base HTTP request handler here. And here what we do is we say, first of all, we set the send response to 200 or we send the response 200 after receiving a get request. Then we send, uh, set the header for the request uh, or response that we want to send then afterwards also to whatever content type we want to send. Here in this case, I just use a plain text, but you could also send, for example, a JSON string or whatever you want. And then we have to call the and headers here on the class object. So next thing we do is use the v file or write file object and call the write function, which requests a uh, yeah some bytes that we can then send back th to the um, yeah whatever client sent the HTTP request. And what we do here is we um, encode our string here using the uh, UTF-8 standard and um, turn this string into bytes. I think you could also call the uh, string dot um, encode function here, but um, yeah, there are multiple ways to do this, but this works. And then like this is to handle uh, get requests. So in this base HTTP, a uh, base HTTP request handler, the do underscore get function will automatically handle all of the GET requests that are coming in. And then we can, of course, also receive POST requests. And here the process is um, similar, but there's one addition because we can also receive information from the client before we respond uh, or before we want to send something back. So what we do here, first of all, we get the content length. So the amount of uh, bytes, I think, that we actually got from the client. And what we can do here is we can read it from the header content minus length. And then we can store the data that was coming from the, from the client in a variable, which you can call post data or whatever you want to call it. And then we say uh, self, and here we use another file object, which is the R file or read file object. And then with the read function, we can then say, we take the content that we received and we decode it in this case. So we um, it's also using the UTF-8 standard, but it's the function that we can use to uh, turn the bytes to a string. 
And then we can print something, for example, thanks for sending me. And then here we print the information that was coming from the um, client. That's what I will demonstrate in a second. And then also this piece of code is pretty much the same that we also had for get uh, for the get function because after receiving a post request you can also send an answer to the server so here we send the response 200 which usually means that a HTTP request was successful then we set a header and for the get message reply I send the header to text um, slash plain here we can use applications uh, slash JSON for example but you could also send a plain text it, it is whatever serves your need really and then we end the headers here and then uh, this is where I use the time uh, package of Python to get the current time and store it in a string variable, which is then called date. And here we then send, uh, again, using the v file object and the write function, we send another uh, byte information here, or a bunch of bytes to the uh, client that, that sent the request to this Python server. And here we say, since this is a JSON, uh, is it called object? But yeah, it's in the JSON format. So what we do here is we uh, provide the information back in the JSON format. So we have um, like these uh, curly brackets and then time, um, colon, and then we send the actual date, like this variable. And that's pretty much it. Everything again is in the UDF8 standard. And that's pretty much it. So after defining our handler that handles all of the requests that are coming at this server, what we still have to do is uh, start or implement the actual server. So what we do here is the setting up the server is very, very easy using the HTTP server class here. Um, because we can just say that this class has, uh, we provide two arguments here. The first one is a tuple, which will define the server address. And here I just chose localhost. So 127.0.0.1. And then you can choose whatever port you want to use. I chose 8080. You can also choose 777. Like whatever you want pretty much. And then the second argument here is a uh, is the handler that you want to use. So here I will use my handler. So this is the handler that I defined up here. And this makes sure that whenever this server that we create here gets a request, then my handler will handle these requests. And in my handler, we define the post and the, um, the get um, function to yeah, reply to the specific request. And then after um, yeah, or setting up the server pretty much, saving it in this server variable, we can then uh, use the server uh, object to say uh, we want to serve forever, which pretty much just starts the server. And then uh, in the end, we can also say server, server close. So whenever um, the program is stopped or the server is stopped, we then close it. And that's pretty much it. That's the Python code. So if we execute it, I can do it here again. You can see it will just start the server. And from this moment on, we are waiting for any request. So server is running. Let's handle the MetaTrader 5 part. So in the MetaTrader 5, uh, I wrote the program already. I just set up an expert advisor. And you can see this is actually super, super easy because I decided that I want to use the native MQL5 web request function here to send requests to the server. You could also use, for example, the WinENet uh, library from Windows to do the same thing. This has several benefits, like you can also use it in the tester, or you can also, um, yeah, I think that's the main benefit actually. But yeah, uh, that's something you could also do if you want to, me to make a video about it, leave it in the comments below. But here I will show the easy way uh, using the web request function of the MetaTrader 5 MQL5 framework. And this also has a great advantage because it's so, so easy. So you can see I don't have any code in the on init and in the on dinit. I could actually delete this. But yeah, I will just have all my code in the on tick. And what we have here is, first of all, we will create a variable for the headers 
And uh, yeah, I don't really have to set any headers here, I think, because I just sent a normal HTTP request. Uh, networking pros will maybe say that this is wrong, but uh, for me it's working. And um, since I'm only working on my like local machine, um, it's it's okay if it uh, works out like this only. And then we have a character array with the data that we then um, send to the server. And we have another character array for the result that we get from the server. And then also we need a string for the result headers. This is all we need. Then we can have a look at the web request function here real quick. So you can see there are two... Um, um, implementations pretty much, much of the web request function I'm using this one so what we have to define is first of all the method this I think get and post is uh, requested uh, is, is, is supported by uh, the meter trader 5 then the URL this is uh, or this should be of course the same address that your server uses and then also after this colon you want to provide the same port that your server uses because otherwise it will not work. Uh, yeah, so next thing we provide is the headers variable. This is empty but still we have to provide something here because it is requested. I think we actually I think we could also just provide null here or an empty string but yeah i will just go with my header string then we have a timeout like how long do we wait uh, until the server response comes or when do we stop uh, waiting for a server request uh, response and i set it this to 1000 i think it is milliseconds and then we have the data that we want to send to the server the result and the result headers. This is pretty much how the web request function looks like in the MetaTrader 5. And that is it. This is the request that we send to the server. And the only thing that we have to do in the MetaTrader 5 program. And then after we get the request from the server, um, yeah, here I print also the return value, which should be the return code coming back from the server. And then here we said uh, we print also the character array to string, which is the result array here. So when we send this request to the server, in this case of Python ser server, it will uh, send something back, which will then be stored in this result character array. And since it's a character array, we will have to transform it to a string using the character array to string function. So let me show you again how this works. If I compile this, I should not get any errors. So before we can send the actual request to the server, this is a very important step that we should not forget. In the, uh, if you use the uh, web request function in the MetaTrader 5, since this is a part of the MQL5 framework, which of course has some additional security layers also, we first have to make sure that we are allowed to send to this address. So in the MetaTrader 5, go to Tools, Options, and then go to Expert Advisors tab here, and then say allow web requests for listed URLs if it is not checked yet. And then what you want to add here is 127.0.0.1. Or if you use localhost, you can add localhost. Or if you use any other API or URL, you want to add it here. So the program is allowed to send to this specific address. If you don't do this, uh, all of your web requests will fail. So this is very important. And if I then activate this test two program on my chart, you can see that um, yeah, here we are now connected, and the Python program or Python server is getting the get requests. And then on the MT5 end, we can see um, the return value that we get from the server is 200. So this is um, the first print statement here, just the return value from the get request function. And the second print statement then prints the actual result, so the information that we got from the server and so on this character array. And this is um, here, if we have a look at the get method, or do get a function here, <coughs> we send the information, this is a message from the server. So this is now also what we can see here in the MetaTrader 5. So yeah, let me stop this uh, MetaTrader 5 program here. And let's now uh, send a POST request. So POST requ request is very, very similar, but we have to provide information also for the server. So also, of course, we send the keyword here or the HTTP method 
to post now instead of get. And then also here, now we fill information in our data array. So we just say string to character array. Then we choose any string we want to send. In this case, I just say bid um, is, um, and then, yeah, the bid price of the, of the symbol. And then I store it in this data character array. Then also what I like to do here is re um, remove the last um, uh, character or byte from this uh, character array because the last byte in a uh, character string or in a string is just the end or escape um, identifier and this is what we do not have to send to the server. So after doing these two steps, now we have this string here like bit, colon, and then the bit price of the current symbol stored in the data array as a character array. So if we now call the web request again using the post method here, so uh, address is of course the same, then our data will be sent to the server. Also, the Python server will realize that this is a post request and it will react with the correct handling method for this. So if we now, so you can see now, um, this uh, is pretty much empty like here are no requests coming in right now but the server is still running and now if we activate the test 2 program again now we will send the post requests to the server so you can see here 200 is still the return um, value or the return code that we get from the server but the information is different because now we get this json um, object or json formatted string here which is time and then colon and then the time and this happens because here uh, in the do post method or function we then uh, send back this time as I explained here. Also on the Python server we now inform, uh, get the, uh, the information from the MIDI 5 terminal. So you can see here this is the code that is uh, catching the information from the MediaTrader 5 post request because here we first of all get the content length, the length of the information that's coming from the MediaTrader and then we store it in the post data variable and then print it using the print function here and we say thanks for sending me and then the post data and you can see the post data here is just bit colon and then the bit price of the symbol and the bit price of course always changing. So this is how you can set up an easy Python server, make it react or communicate with the MediaTrader 5 terminal. So let me know in the comments if you were able to follow along or if I did not explain something properly. I have to say that I'm pretty new to Python programming. I just learned it last week and I know the few basics only. So this is why maybe my terms are not always 100% correct if I explain Python code, but I'm doing my best. So I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, let me know your feedback. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>